Okay, so hello, Rocketeers. Good evening. Um, uh, today is a very special day. We have another Rocket Hub special day partner webinar. And as we all know, all of the webinars we do are with exceptional founders. And this one is, again, nothing exceptional. We have uh, amazing people with us who have been uh, building great products, have been in the industry um, since long and have the idea of what customers need and what uh, they should build. So uh, please welcome Vidya and Vartika from Fluoic, uh, Team Fluoic. Thank you so much for joining in. It's an honor to host you. Thanks, Karan. Thank so excited to be here. Yep, yep. Everyone in the community is excited to meet you. And um, so they would like to see uh, how you are building the team at Fluoic, how you're building the product. And actually, where did this all begin from? And how did the even, even the name came into existence? Because a lot of people are excited to hear that. So uh, let's begin. And um, if you can kind of introduce yourselves, the team, and uh, why it was started for you, like, like, let's begin from there. Sure. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Vartika. We started Floyd last year together with Vidya. Uh, we have a very small but very special and very mighty team uh, based between Bangalore and USA right now. Uh, the reason we really started building what we are building with Floyd is what we saw that uh, a lot of product teams struggle to showcase the actual real power of their product, both pre-sales as well as post-sales. And oftentimes this involves you know, one of the following, either you take tons of screenshots, you stitch them in a Google presentation, or you take tons of screenshots, then you try and make PDFs out of it and upload it on your knowledge base, or you try and do like recordings of screen recordings and then try to add yourself in or retakes because, you know, you did not get it right the first time. And still you come up with stuff which is not interactive. It is not engaging. It is not as good looking or, you know, you need you need an animator or you need a video editor or you need like more support to still polish it further. And this cycle repeats over and over again across all product uh, companies. But even otherwise, anybody who's trying to showcase, you know, capabilities of what they are building and what they what kind of value they are adding, this is a huge problem. And every two weeks when products change or new capabilities get added, this is a repeatable sort of mess, right? So we thought, you know, is there a way to make all of this really simple, really intuitive and uh, do like a one-time effort? So for us, the effort to update, the effort to engage should be as minimal as possible. And the software does most of the heavy lift. And that's how we came up with the idea to build this solution. As far as the name is concerned, Vidya and I were pitballing on a lot of names. And, uh, you know, as the folklore goes, like five letter words, dot com should be available. But what's special with Floyd is we were definitely keeping the workflows in mind because we were going to make the workflows our predominant showcase and like make sure that people can talk and showcase their workflows effectively, effortlessly. So we wanted to incorporate the word flow there. And, uh, you know, ik in Hindi means one. And so it was more like one flow. And, you know, it like with Floyd, you can remain in flow. You don't have to worry about these repeatable, uh, you know, quirks or just repeatable problems with the showcasing your product. Your product does all the talking and selling on its own. And so that's the longish version. But yeah, we we're excited to share how Floyd came into being and what it means. Great, great. With there, would you like to add anything to it? Ah, it was an interesting uh, thing, uh, right? Like uh, when we wanted to discuss the names, right? Uh, we kind of pondered like so many different combinations, and uh, uh, and this was like a like like a click, right? I mean, it just so happened that we were always thinking flow, 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 and then it just landed on us in this way, and then uh, and this was very unique. Nobody had this name, uh, and uh, yeah, uh, that was an exciting moment. Exactly, I, I would say. Uh, Around the uh, last year, mid, I guess, yeah, it was it was great, yeah. Amazing, great. I think yeah. uh, now everyone here knows um that you know how it came into existence and how uh, you brainstormed the name. Let's now show people the power and you know how the software works and what's how what goes behind creating a flow, right? Uh, because that's what people would like to see and understand. Um, so, you know, you, you can kind of begin making people understand the product better. 
and I'll let you share any one of your screens. So, yep, we can go ahead. Okay, I will share my screen. Perfect. Uh, is it uh, visible? You now? can see it. Yes. Okay. Oh, fantastic. Okay. So basically, right, uh, as uh, we were uh, talking about the one flow thing, so the, the, the basic concept is like uh, you create, uh, let's say, a one showcase of your product and uh, you, are, you, you should have ability to kind of reach out to your potential customers and your existing customers in multiple different ways. Because the paradigm has shifted in the industry from, uh, let's say, uh, more from a, a company-centric towards to a customer-centric view. So your customers demand uh, various different ways of consumption, right? It is no longer like, okay, I decide as, a, as an organization and then say, okay, this is a format I give you, or this is a way you should consume my data and, and you are forced to consume it in that way. That has shifted from with so many different medias in uh, uh, which is coming into existence, right? Uh, uh, so earlier, if you see uh, all these uh, uh, help articles and let's say, uh, uh, assistant articles which are available are always given in uh, in the form of PDFs or in the form of uh, a textual content. And that was pretty much the norm in which uh, any of those things were shared. And uh, when it comes to demo, uh, most of the demos are done with uh, screenshots or a couple of two screenshots are shown or they come up with a, a completely animation of the product uh, explaining uh, I mean, not the real product, but animation of the concept of the product in certain ways. So all these things have moved away and customers are asking, show me how real the product is, how I can uh, see or get the feel of the product as much as possible. And again, from a consumption perspective, right? I mean, they have, they wanted multiple types of consumption. Certain times they see like, okay, show me a quick video of this so I can just watch it without uh, uh, reading, going through it is some... Uh, certain expectations uh, at certain point in time. Uh, certain other customers would say that, no, I like actually reading uh, materials uh, better than watching as a video. So I would want to see it as a like a, like a document uh, kind of thing. So all these different aspects are put together. And that is the one of the primary core reasons how uh, Floyd uh, came into existence. So here you create uh, one flow, which we call it as flow here. That is nothing but you capture one critical workflow of your product or uh, uh, showcasing a feature or showcasing a specific use case uh, uh, as crisp as possible, as atomic as possible. And once you have that in place, then you can actually create multiple formats from Floyd for all these different consumptions. So this is, this is pretty much, uh, I would say, uh, the overall uh, concept of Floyd. And uh, yeah, this is a product you are already seeing the product screen here. Um, so Karan, how do you want to go into the demo? You want me to kind of take a use case and walk me uh, through that, or uh, yes. any specific question and answer? We do it with the uh, with the participants. Yes. Like, what is the correct? So I think we can go through two ways. I we can can't... have. You can hear me now. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I can hear you now. Yeah. Perfect. So we can showcase a use case, you know, for example, if you're for a SaaS and even we, let's say our audience consists of freelancers and agency owners. So how can a service based company can even, you know, use Fluic and even how can a product based company use Fluic, right? Or someone working for SaaS company can use Fluic. So we can, let's say, showcase two format types, interactive demo and step-by-step um, -step types. And then we can even auto convert and show people like, how you know you can quickly ship a document um or you can download a video stuff like that perfect perfect that's great so uh i will take a very simple use case uh very very sure. bare minimum use case let's say i have a product so i'm taking a speed test as a product so let's say i have a product which is going to do the speed test and i wanted to showcase this to my customers let's say so basically what I would want to do is I want to capture the moment of the speed test, right? So I go here, I say that, okay, I want to capture a new recording. And uh, I can choose any of the format to start with uh, in the beginning. 
or I can also later convert it to the format which I would want uh, to use uh, uh, for the specific use cases. And uh, the same workflow is available in multiple formats. So it doesn't matter how you ca capture it. All the formats would be available. If you notice here, there are two formats uh, which is uh, having a slightly different uh, view. One would be camera only and one would be the camera uh, on screen. These are two different formats. Uh, so these two formats are generally used for uh, feature announcements or let's say uh, something where you would want to talk while you present the product. So this captures both the, the presenter video. So as he, as the person speaks, that is also captured and the entire workflow, which uh, is being captured on the screen, uh, which is shown on the screen is also captured. These are the two formats, uh, uh, which is uh, in that angle. The other three formats are just capturing the workflow, which is captured, which is shown on the screen. So I'll go with a very simple one to start with, let's say interactive demo. So here I can choose what is the, uh, the microphone in which I'm going to use. So I'm going to use this microphone, uh, which I'm currently using. So I'm selecting this and uh, it will ask. Uh, uh, so before we jump into this, right? So a couple of points I wanted to bring up here is, uh, this is a browser-based application. So the entire flock is a browser-based application. So uh, the entire thing works with uh, the browser app and uh, uh, what we have is something called the Chrome extension. So we have released an extension in Chrome as of today. Uh, so that is available uh, in public and people can install the Chrome extension uh, and that will help in capturing the workflow. Other browsers and other things are on are all on the work. So in future, we are planning to release for other browsers too. But uh, yeah. predominantly, most of the users are using Chrome today. So we went ahead as the, the first uh, candidate, uh, obviously became Chrome. So I have installed the Chrome extension here on, the, on my browser. And I am uh, selecting uh, the tab which I wanted to capture. It gives you three options, uh, the cap capture, the window capture, the entire screen capture, all three options are available. Uh, but most of the demo use cases always goes with tab. The reason with tab is uh, it is cleaner. It doesn't show you the, uh, the address bars or any of the browser related information, the kind of, uh, let's say the extension you have installed. None of those things are visible for the users. I will show both the use cases so that uh, we can see the difference, how that uh, is shown. Uh, so generally, uh, the tab is uh, used for capture. But in Floyd, we can also do multi-tab recording, which also I will demonstrate it here. So I'm starting with one tab, which is the speed test. So I'm saying share this. So it starts with the uh, tab. Automatically, it goes to the tab, which was uh, open in my browser. And it gives me an initial option, like how we wanted to capture this. So the recommended resolution is normally people would want to do a, a, a portrait or a, a landscape kind of a, a approach they would design. So generally for demos, because it is used mostly in the websites and uh, uh, mobile phones, they use 16 by nine, which is portrait. If it is specifically only for mobile and they look for a portrait view, then it is actually one is to one. So I go with 16 by nine. So it automatically resizes the browser to fit the 16 by nine uh, resolution. And uh, we can start the capture. That is very simple vanilla use case. We also have something called blur selected area. So this is an advanced capability. Suppose let's say there is a sensitive information on the website, which you don't want to capture. So what you can do is you can say add, and you can say, okay, I wanted to, let's say hide this. So these informations are not to be captured. So you can actually hide those informations. And once you are ready with this, you can say done and you can say start capture. Also, uh, let's say I want to add more. I, I'm going to click on speed test here. Sorry, one sec, uh, I will undo this. So I, I am doing, let me start the capture here. Sure. I think start capture. So it gives you one, two, three uh, as a preparation time and uh, it will allow you to start the capture. So now this is getting captured with the blur area. And uh, let's say I'm going to say start speed test. So now it is actually showing me the speed test. So this is where I will actually talk about the product. So I'll say that, okay, this is how you start the speed test. 
It is showing you the, the megabytes per second. Uh, it shows you the internet speed, how it is. You have an option called cancel. You click on cancel and it cancels the speed test. You can click on retry and it would actually restart the retest. So basically what I'm trying to do here is I'm explaining the product as I'm actually executing those workflows. Makes okay. sense. Now, if I go back to uh, uh, the, the screen, the pause screen, it tells me that uh, I have to continue here. And it tells me that I have actually clicked four times on the uh, product. So it has captured the clicks wherever I have clicked. And now I'm going to say done. So now what it effectively does is like whatever has been captured on the browser, it is uploading to the server here. Uh, and this purely depends on the speed of the internet, the amount of buffer we have on the browser window. All those things plays a, a role on this and it uploads to the uh, central location. And here it actually does two, three processing before it is even made available for users to, uh, let's say, edit or further customize this. Once that processing is done, it actually also publishes one of the vanilla version of the flow so that you can immediately see how this output is going to look like. This is a base version of what is captured and uh, all the mouse clicks elements are captured in this. All the items which are blurred is already shown here as blurred and the entire workflow is captured. And while capturing the work workflow, it has also recorded my audio. It has recorded my video, uh, the screen video. Then it has done a, a subtitle of whatever I have spoken. Uh, automatically generates the subtitle uh, and it puts in here. Uh, we support few of the European languages uh, out of the box. So it recognizes some of those language, not just English. Let's say, for example, if you speak in French, it will identify that you are speaking in French and it would uh, create subtitles in French, uh, which you can use it. So now this is a very simple interactive demo. It got created. So, and it gives you a copy link here. Let's say I, I click on the copy link. Uh, I am going to open it on a new tab here. Mm -hmm. So now if I see this here, so what it is showing me here is, uh, everything is configurable here. I will take you through those uh, screens also. So it starts by saying, okay, ready to dive in. Uh, and so this is exactly what I was speaking while I was doing this uh, uh, capturing of this particular capability. And this is where I click. So it actually stopped at that point and it is indicating the users to actually also continue uh, click on that uh, same thing. Now it is actually showing me the I will say that okay, this is how to start the speech, showing you the the So this is pretty much immediately this output is created. Now let me go back to the product here. And if I go back to the edit screen here, so this I will get a lot more capability. Uh, I can customize what is going on within the product itself. For example, if you see here, these are the already the elements which are identified and added onto the product. So first one was something called ready, ready to dive in. This is what we saw in the interactive demo, the first step here. If I, if I go back to the first step, it showed me ready to dive in experience, uh, experience of products, right? This is exactly what the title is. So you can customize this title, you can change this, you can change the button text, you can even go to a different URL too. And if you don't want this option, you can actually also delete this. You can say that, okay, I don't want to do this in the beginning. I want to do something else. So this is fully customizable. Then if I click on this, this is where the, the first mouse click was identified. And it says, click on run uh, speed test. This was actually fetched from, uh, captured from the browser. Now here again, we have multiple options. This is a very simple case where it just shows the text here. So, but I would, let's say I wanted to change it into a different uh, option. Uh, for example, I wanted to have a heading and a text. So let's say this is a heading and here I can say, uh, please, here to 
star request. So this gives an option for both heading and uh, uh, title. This is this is one example. Let's say if I go down further down here, uh, there is something called rate right here. Now here I I wanted to say that okay I wanted to position this uh, here. I don't want to keep it on the right hand side. I can keep the 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 window in the way way where it is suiting better or where it is appropriate. Maybe there is some critical information which is shown on the right hand side. So you wanted to shift the tooltips area, so that is also possible. Another capability uh, is, uh, for example, let's say if I, if I go to, uh, let's say speed test here, I'm just selecting the same option here. Um, there is something called zoom. So for example, let's say this is disabled. Now I'm going to enable the zoom. And I've done some couple of changes in the edit screen, correct? Now, while I'm doing the edit screen, whatever was published or whatever was already published, uh, released, doesn't change at all. It works exactly as it is. So you can actually edit everything while the things are published. You have shared it with your friends or let's say you shared it on your website or you embedded it on a website. So it is already available. Whatever is published is available on, on the websites. Uh, nothing is getting impacted. All the changes will go only when you click on publish now. Mm -hmm. Now, what it does is it is actually pre-processing again uh, the changes which was given and it is published now. But when you publish this new changes, the old URL remains as it is and it continues to work as it is. You just refresh that and it works instantly uh, in terms of the new uh, changes which were published. That is number one. Number two is when, uh, let's say when a flow is embedded into your website or let's say embedded in your product itself, even those things will have immediate impact. It will change immediately in all those places without any code change. As it is. Makes sense. Here, uh, we have added a couple of changes, right? So let's say let's, I have clicked on here. You can see the zoom effect here. So I added a zoom effect for this particular click. So it actually zoomed in and it showed that specific thing. Now it here if we added a title and a description. This got changed here. Mm -hmm. Also, a question on the zoom. I think I was just cutting you here about. Um, so people asked. I mean, can you? Is there are there specific levels of zoom? Like, uh, is it two x, one x, or if you can, you know, or yes. just just one zoom and then it just zoom out, zooms out. Like, okay. you know, okay. there are multiple levels for zoom, right? So that's what there was one question. So we thought I would take it up while we are on the zoom. Perfect. So this is the first version of Zoom which we have released. So uh, the Zoom function here works with respect to the uh, mouse clicks. So wherever the click was added, so it actually zooms in that far. And uh, it is actually decided based on the optimum level of Zoom. Makes sense. It is, uh, is pre-calculated as to how much Zoom level is more optimal to show a particular screen. Instead, if if I, for example, if I zoom in too much here, it becomes too big and probably I will lose out much information Correct. on the screen too. At the yes. same, totally uh, at a, let's say at the zoomed out level, then the zoom effect is not there. So it's a combination, exactly. the resolution in which the the uh, the product is recorded. Let's say I'm actually recording in HD mode. So it gives me Correct. a lot uh, leeway to do a large zoom here. At the same hmm. time, I capture it on a, let's say, SD or a, a smaller resolution, then the zoom factor would be automatically smaller. True. So as of today, this is automatically decided by the product uh, at this point in time. Uh, but definitely, yes, as a element here, if you on the right hand side, we are planning to planning to introduce zoom as a separate capability uh, mm -hmm. in the future. Uh, that is there in our future roadmap. That will That's give to do zoom any part of the uh, product not just the mouse click you can actually while talking you can zoom on certain areas uh, even without a mouse click right you can zoom in let's for example you're showing a chart it is explaining uh, let's say certain aspects of uh, let's say the trajectory or the trend now when you show the chart it is actually a fixed chart on the screen right but you want to zoom in and show certain areas you are not really clicking there so those are the capabilities which uh, would unlock uh, automatically when we once we give the zoom as a separate capability, but that is not there yes. currently in the product. That is in the future roadmap. Mm -hmm. Makes Does sense. It... Yes, yes, correct. Um, okay, there was some question, right? 
Yeah, we can take that up. No worries. We can continue. We have the we have a Q and A round definitely. Oh, okay, fantastic. Okay, yes. so uh, so this was the uh, Zoom and uh, simple edit capability. Now, mm -hmm. if I go back to the edit screen here, which I am here now, if I go to let's say subtitles, you will see already the subtitles. Whatever I have spoken is completely transcribed, and it is actually showing me at what point what I have spoken. So let's say if I if I select this, this is this is what uh, I have spoken here. So, showing me. So I can. And you can edit, and you can edit these whatever you have spoken. Yeah. So for example, right? Uh, let's say um, I wanted to change this to. Uh, I want to edit this and then say this. Now, if I do this, it does two things. One is, it will change the. Uh, the subtitle okay and since now it is using my voice my voice cannot be changed because i've changed the subtitle correct correct so the voice will remain as it is but if i choose an ai voice here i'm just going to select an ai voice here It will show me where because the AI voice tempo would be different, the speed in which it is spoken is different. Sure. So sure. there would be some mismatches. Uh, the way I am speaking maybe a little faster or slower than the actual AI voice. So let me select a different one. Probably, um, let's say whether this will work. I'll say. Because they have multiple, they have different speed of talking and. You know, the tempo is different. Different accents makes sense. Different accents. So this one, this one got through. Uh, so here, if you see, if you listen to this, right? So yeah. Start the capture. So now this is getting captured with a blur error. And now let's say I'm. So in this scenario, what I can do is I can I can completely edit it in a very mm -hmm. different way. I can I can give whatever text I want to give here. Uh, and then it will speak the same language. It will speak and uh, it will also show the subtitle. So now both will synchro get synchronized. Makes sense. Yeah. Well, so this is uh, on the AI voice. So AI voice works with both uh, uh, the text and the subtitle will get synchronized. If I use the presenter voice as a recording, then uh, the subtitle and this one would be a mismatch. Uh, so we expect users to make a judgment call as to what kind of words they want to edit and how it is. Maybe certain words are uh, not recognized properly. Uh, so there is a, a small spelling correction has to be done on the subtitle. So those things can be done, keeping the presenter voice as it is, just editing some of those things. But if they do a large change, then obviously it is going to have a, a mismatch between what is being spoken or from a user perspective, what they hear and what they read would be two different things. Makes sense. And while we are in the AI voice, we have multiple voices uh, from multiple languages also. Most of the European languages we have put in here. Uh, we have customers across Europe who are using the product. So this is mainly because of their request. We have enabled this capability here. Uh, so users can choose different uh, uh, language here and uh, they can actually, uh, for example, I'm assuming this is French, right? So if I select this, uh, here it won't generate because I have spoken in English. So it will not be able to uh, identify the French words in whatever I have spoken. So it will probably put the same thing or it may probably uh, make it empty based on certain parts of what it is. But if I've spoken in French, this would actually generate the French text here. Yeah. yeah, of course, makes sense. So it won't translate it. It will, it will just speak in the French accent how they speak English written words. Yeah. So this is that. Uh, let me again switch back to. But this works for people across the world. So of course, if they're recording in, let's say Portuguese. So yeah. if you choose the Portuguese AI voice over there, then it would write and speak in that particular dialect. This doesn't do translation. It doesn't say Correct. that okay, you speak in English, but it generates yeah. normal. It doesn't do translation. Of course. Yeah. It just Makes shows sense. whatever is captured. It is shown there. Correct. This is one capability. Now, uh, if I go back to uh, the other capability here, let's say in this in the screen, I wanted to show a couple of more information. Let's say I am here, I can add additional hotspots. 
So I wanted to say, uh, say, mm, let's say, I'm just keeping it here, uh, and then say this is. com you can test speed in this side too okay now if you notice there is a small number which came here as two what this signifies here is i'll show you in publish so sure. now in this specific time right which is the seventh second of the video or let's say the mm -hmm. workflow capture actually i only clicked one time to the mouse because uh, while i'm capturing i have clicked i can Probably there is an interaction with the actual product, right? So I've clicked on certain things and it did as it are, it uh, it would have changed the screen or something would have happened on the product. There is a uh, interaction, real interaction, which has gone into the product. But while you want to showcase the product, you wanted to show different aspects in the same screen. So you want to show this is where this is uh, this capability is there. In this, I have this capability. You wanted to showcase that. Now, for that to happen, you might you may need to show multiple uh, click points on the same screen. So the way it this works is the new tab. So here, uh, uh, so this is the first click which has happened. So now I'm clicking on this. It is showing in the same screen. The second click has come here. Makes sense. So this has become step three automatically uh on the same uh but if you notice here this is a new thing which we added correct so that's a new note like inside the same screen after yeah. you kind of click that button and then th that was the second step third step was it showcases you that this is another competitor of speed test which is fast.com so it's just a note i think then people can because a lot of times you're just on a single screen of a SaaS. If you change tabs, if you change any any special, you know, any specific area. So this is a good thing to kind of have an extra additional notes or annotations given. And this can be added, any number of uh, points can be added on the same screen. So user can actually navigate. Uh, let's say exactly. if, if I want to capture, uh, let me capture a new one again. Uh, sure. This time I will choose a different uh, website, let's say, um, So let's say Wikipedia. Okay, so all this. So this is one page I have opened here. So I'm going to capture a new recording now. Let's say this time I wanted to do screen capture. Let's. So I'm selecting my uh, audio. Then this time I'm choosing this particular tab. Then already my resolution is set. So I'm not going to change my resolution. I'm going to say start recording now. Okay. So now I am on this screen here. So I, uh, I'm, I'm talking about the screen. I'm explaining what is this. Let's say this is a picture here. I'm showing this. Uh, I'm scrolling down. Uh, now let's say I'm clicking on Chicago here. And it is opening in a new tab. Now I want to do record on the other tab too. So I don't need to stop the recording here. All I need to do is I will go to uh, the other tab and I will say that share this tab instead, which is coming on the top. Now I'm on this screen here. I'm seeing this. Let's say I'm clicking on this uh, picture here. I'm seeing this picture here. Let's say I'm talking about certain parts of it. Now I want to go back to, let's say, Walt Disney's. This one I'm saying, go oh, share this tab. So I've done a bunch of clicks. I went through two tabs here. I switched between multiple tabs. I've captured that. I go back to the product and then say, I'm done. Same process. It actually uploads the same thing back into the backend. And it does an initial processing of the video. Then it does uh, whatever I have spoken. It transcodes that. Uh, it transcribes that. Uh, creates subtitles. It also formats the video, everything. It, it makes the first uh basic flow ready uh which can be immediate which is already published it also publishes it actually makes it public and gives you the url so all these steps are done and it is given to the user at this point in time here we have uh we have used uh, the format as video here so mm -hmm. the entire output would be a simple video uh playback kind of scenario so now we what we'll do is we'll 
see this as an output and create an interactive demo from here. So automatically yep. how the other format is getting created, we'll see uh, in this case. So, uh, okay, these are two clicks are done. So if I see, if I play back here, if you see here, so now this I'm clicking on Chicago here and it is opening in a new tab. Now I want to start with the other tab. Start with the other tab. The other tab. So if you notice now, the video recording actually has changed to capture the other tab automatically. There is no pause in the in the recording. I did not stop. I did not uh, uh, stop my uh, thoughts. I can continue to speak as normal as uh, I'm speaking. And the product demo comes out in a much elegant way because I can, I'm able to switch between multiple tabs. And user is not even shown these things. The entire view is cleaner. The tab share only shows what is relevant, what is a product thing. So that is how this happens. Now here I'm going to select, say, generate interactive video uh, demo from here. So now what it will do is, it has identified the mouse clicks, everything was already there in place, correct? So now I'm going to say publish now, this one. Now it will actually uh, create those interactions too now. So earlier it was not showing us the pop-up CTAs, it was not showing up the mouse clicks, nothing, nothing was coming. It was just playing as a simple video where uh, uh, a user can just see this as a simple video playback thing. But the same thing which I have done with that is now converted to an interactive demo here. Which this is, is powerful it, because a lot of times it. I think, yeah, correct. So a lot of times I think people need this about from video, they would like to share it as a demo or stuff like that. This is very powerful. I think I haven't, haven't seen anywhere in any software yet. Now I have copied this. Let me open a new tab here. And I'm pasting this link here. Now you got this link here. So now click on this screen here. So I have been talking about this link and explaining what this link is in this picture. Going there up and scrolling down. I'm clicking on Chicago here. See, last time it just went through without any pause. Now it says click on Chicago here. Now user is clicking on this. Now he gets a great experience, right? Because when he clicks on this, and it is opening in a new tab. Now I'm going to stop the recording here. All I need is to see all the chat with that now here if you notice here i have clicked on it and i'm explaining what is going on and uh it is showing after the explanation is done that is when because that is the time it i have taken to go, go to the other tab and say select share Correct. okay now i let me go back here and that is something called swift play here i select this option now i copy the link again now I give the same uh, URL here. Now, uh, if I click here, it shows me, it doesn't give me the explanation. It directly goes to the click points. I started the demo here. So it started, I'll re restart again. So it says ready to dive in. I click, it says click on Chicago. Now I click on Chicago. It immediately goes to the screen. Makes sense. So it doesn't play the video in between. It skips the. It your... actually goes to the point where the actions you are happening, it. and uh, this is a, another experience where the user could get. There are only two clicks which was captured. It was done, and mm -hmm. and the screen changes back to wall display because that is where we ended the uh, capture. Okay. Goes back mm -hmm. automatically, and it says you want to restart the demo. So I did one capture as a video. I was able to get interactive demo. I was able to get the interactive demo in a different experience in just uh, selecting an option and republishing, not even republishing, just copy the URL and putting it. And both these options are available at the same time. Uh, so this is this, let's say if I go back here and uh, let's say if I say, I don't want this copy the link and 
I put this, I get this experience also at the same time. So you can have in certain parts of the website where you wanted to show the explanation with audio, you can show that now. In certain parts of the product, you don't want to show the explanation, talk about it, but quickly show the clicks, you can show that too. These both are available at the same time. Hmm. Now let me also generate the guide from here. That was the third format which we had. Yes. So this is to create a documented view of the same clicks which the user has done. So here we have clicked on Chicago and we have clicked on a particular picture. So what it does is it it, it only takes those parts where the click has happened and it creates that as a readable document. So here you don't get an audio, you don't get a... Uh, any of the snippets of what was happening during that capture, none of those things are in place. So these are done here. And while this is getting generated, uh, I mean, you, you, you can wait on the screen or you can always go back and it come back. Doesn't matter, everything happens in the back end. So you can always go back and come back. So before, uh, while that is happening, I want to also show this capability here. Uh, and all these three are saved uh, differently, right? Like when you yes, generate yes, it automatically. All three are different. Yeah, every format you create is, Come uh, kept separately. You can create any number of formats uh, from the same thing again and again because you can create, you can edit, you can change everything. So everything is uh, kept uh, independent of each other. Makes sense. Um, uh, let me go back to this one here. Uh, if you see, uh, I wanted to talk about embed code here. Hmm. So embed code is very similar to this copy link. The only difference here is this copy link is a public link which you get and you can share it. Embed code gives you a code. Uh, for example, let's say I'm, I'm saying cop, this is a generic embed code here. Let's say I'm copy this code. Uh, let me open this and show you in the... Uh, so, I can you share. I'm sharing this for a second. So this is the code which is getting copied here. If you see, this is an iframe code. Uh, this also has a URL in it. Uh, it has a height with uh, certain parameters which are generally default is what we have given. But the, the users are completely free to edit this. They, they can choose how they want to embed it. They can change the height. They can change the width. They can appropriately fit it. For example, if they have a different style in which the website is built or the product is built, then they can choose this embed uh, code, uh, except, except this is the only important line here, which is where the data is coming from. Everything else is very standard HTML code. Uh, they can edit it to fit their uh, CSS standards and they can use it. Now, let me switch back to the screen here. One second. Um, If you see in this, we have noticed it. Uh, this is generic embed code, uh, which gives you a very standard iframe uh, embed code. For example, if you want to embed it in a Notion, we customize certain elements. This is also standard HTML code only, but uh, slightly certain things are uh, configured in a slightly different way, which is more appropriate for a Notion embed scenario. Mm -hmm. Okay? Makes sense. And, and if you notice one more thing, if I change something here, you can see that this also changes here. And this is nothing right. but we have embedded our own help document in our own product. Mm -hmm. yep. so this, is, this is the same embed code which we are using to embed and help article of how this could be done in Zen, Zen Desk. I'll make it just full screen. Is it is it visible in full screen? Yes, it is. So this is actually showing how uh, uh, an embed can be done in Zendesk, which we have created as a flow, which we have uh, created using our own product, and we have embedded it in our own product. Mm, it's very clean. It's, it's been embedded very, very neatly. And this embed there. code is customized to fit our, let's say, UX. Yeah. Right? It's because yeah. our product has a right-hand side panel. The panel size is only this much. So we want to fit mm -hmm. our embed code to fit on the right hand side. And this is one example of how this could be embedded. It could be embedded Makes on sense. the website. If you go to our website, you could see lots of embeds across uh, multiple pages uh, in different sizes, heights, and things like that. If it is a document, people embed it completely the long document, right? They Makes they sense. don't embed it like a small one. They embed it like a, yeah. 
one full page or something so that the at least one or two uh, sections are visible uh, in the same screen. Makes sense. So let's go back to this. Okay, something is, ah, it's loaded here. Here, if I publish this, and if I go and open uh, the link here, the experience is slightly different here. Uh, here, it shows the image of where the uh, user has clicked as this one, and it shows you the title there. Uh, you get a table of content, author, a different kinds of edit scenarios are available here. So I'm copying this link and I'm opening a tab. If I paste it here, the UX is different. So it shows like this, so the user can actually say zoom out, zoom in. This is a full screen. This is a single zoom, it goes to that point. And let's say if there are many articles, it will actually scroll down and go to that point. And the edit scenarios are very, very different here. For example, if I go here, I can say that, okay, don't show this most click, this most click. And uh, I can act actually, I can, I can edit here. Mm -hmm. I can edit here. So, so the, the entire editing, uh, the options which are available is very different in the format here. And let's say if I want to write a description for this, right? Let's say I want to fill in some text here. So I may I may go to let's say this article itself, and probably let's say I'm going to copy this link, uh, this entire thing here, and go back here and say I'm going to paste it. It comes with all the links and everything here. Makes sense. And if any um, user wants to add steps over here in this new converted guide, can you do that right now? So adding a new step and editing a new step is uh, is a work in progress. Uh, it would get released by uh, in by the end of this month or sooner than that. Uh, so okay. so that would be available here. So this is as of now. It is as per the capture, which is available, which is publicly available. Adding step is are there in our uh, uh, I would say development testing environment yet. It is not ready for public consumption. So once it is there, we would release it there. So I'll Great. refresh this page here. So it comes with all those links, everything. If I click here, automatically it will go to that page. True. So True. now your your guide has become much more uh, richer in terms of it is not just showing like a where what is clicked and what is the image. It gives you the context. You can you can you can make it. This is a rich text thing. You can add like a uh, good amount of context in that and uh, describe what your things are. And uh, this is for people who would want to read. <laughs> Good. We also have one capability. Uh, this is again available across the board, but uh, let's say here as, a, as, a, as an end user, let's say if he clicks on this, let's say, and he's saying that, okay, you can actually leave a comment here. Hello. Mm -hmm. What is this? Let's say if I do this, and these are optional. Uh, this is uh, this is a beta feature which we have given out uh, in the market. We are testing these features, adaptability, and things like that. Uh, it's a it's a very bare minimum capability which we have released it at the at, in the market. Just we are testing this capability at this point. Um, I'm just bringing this to the to our to our people attendee here. Uh, so now I've added this comment here. Now, if I go to the product, let's say I am the owner of the flu. If you go to the product and there is something called comment section here, I will see this comment, uh, whoever has given, right? I'll see the comment. Okay, somebody has commented here. Mm, makes sense. That's good. This would come. Uh, people could, uh, and if they mandate the email ID. So this is something work in progress. Uh, we are collecting user feedbacks, understanding what it is. Because it is little intrusive in certain cases. Uh, people doesn't want to give email because it is public uh, link. So, so many aspects are going on on that. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a very early feature uh, capability which you have released here. So as of now, it is simple, voluntary information where user would give an email ID or a name. Uh, it would capture that and it will be shown here. Uh, and uh, there is no way to respond back. This is only to capture comment. It is not a, a platform where you can initiate a chat or anything like that. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very clearly to only capture comment and uh, not a chat box or uh, not an interactive thing. Uh, you just acquire those data points, that's all. So just one way 
communication. It's one way, yeah. It is, uh, and it is designed in that way. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, because uh, for our use case, for demo use cases, for showcasing use cases, uh, yeah. the, the, the point is it is not going to be two-way uh, most of the time. It would be like somebody seeing certain things and asking questions, and then you would pro probably engage them with another interactive demo or something like that. So this is at that point. So I have kind of completed uh, certain aspects of the product uh, at this point in time. Uh, there is one critical aspect which I wanted to also talk about is insights. Um, hmm. So this insights is, uh, uh, so there are two kinds of insights we have in the product. One is uh, uh, default uh, and uh, the insight which we give for every customer. Uh, so this is the insight. So this gives you, uh, for example, whatever we have seen, right? So this this one which we just did, so one comment is received. There are total views, two views of that. And uh, last view is at this time. So this is like how many CTAs are clicked on this, how many times this was viewed. So you get an idea of like how, how much consumption is going on, what is being viewed, what CTAs are being clicked, things like that. This insight is at a very top level. It gives you a trend trajectory of like what flows and what is going on at a very top level. The next level of insights, what we have is something called advanced insights. Uh, so there we integrate with, uh, let's say, some of your reporting system, uh, reporting tool. Uh, for example, Mixpanel or uh, mm -hmm. any of the reporting system which you have, right, where you capture the statistical data or let's say HubSpot or any CRM system where you capture certain information. So there we give advanced data point for a particular flow. Uh, that data is created and we push that data into the uh, into those systems. That is uh, one capability which we have as an advanced uh, uh, insights. The second capability on advanced insight, which is available, which uh, which is work in progress and which will be made available for uh, users uh, within Floyd, they will also get to know to a certain degree, not at a line item level, but to a certain degree of, for example, uh, here it shows that five CTS, uh, five times the CTS clicked. It, it will give you a much more detailed view of like what CTAs are clicked, at what point the user has dropped on. It will give you a little bit more insights uh, in case uh, for customers who doesn't have, a, let's say, a reporting systems or any of those things, they can get to know to some extent within uh, Quark itself, uh, an advanced analytic aspect will be available. That is also work in progress and it will be made available uh, by the first week of next month or by the end of this month. That is where uh, it, is, it is all in, in work in progress. So that's amazing. That's good. I think that will be next level insights, you know, because like um, if you give that information for a SaaS, I think that will be one of the things people want to know always, right? That like, where is the churn happening? So they can, I think, prevent churn from this particular analytics. Hmm. These are two main use cases we are seeing in insights. One is uh, most of our customers, right? Uh, to uh, let's say enterprise customers, large customers who are using it, they have a ton of data. They want to correlate that with their data. So which means mm -hmm. they don't want to go to two tools saying that okay, I want to go to Floyd to see this data. Then I have to go to my let's say uh, my CRM systems or my reporting analytical system to see their data, and I have to cross relate these two. It becomes a nightmare for them. So we get majority of the data point and uh, requirements from those people saying that give advanced analytics only there. We keep, please push the data to those systems and uh, we so that we can run a lot more detailed data point, uh, analysis, drill down, drop downs. And also access controls are very different, right? The people who actually <laughs> analyze the data and consume the data are very different people from the people who will actually okay. create the demos. Okay. So that is where we started with. And we also got uh, some feedback from some few customers saying that we don't have great analytical tool, but can you give me little more, more insights? So we decided, okay, we'll give a little more insights for advanced users here uh, who wants to dig in a little bit more here. But this will definitely be uh, at a certain level after which it will be pushed into the reporting system where drill downs, different chart things, everything will be possible. Correct. And I've used Mixpanel, and I think if you don't have any customer events set or a view set, you can pretty much be you know be lost in that particular you know <laughs> um system or analytics you won't be able to know what's happening with your product so i think integrating that with Puyak will be an add-on 
for people. Amazing. Okay, that's good to know. Um, can you also showcase people like how the custom branding works? Um, yes. for them. Yeah. Uh, so let me open up. Uh, uh let's say one of the interactive videos or uh, demos here. And if you see in this, if you notice in the bottom, you can see a logo which is coming in, and all these uh, things are in a second color here, right? Uh, I've used something like a maroon, dark red maroon kind of scenario here. If you see here, triflog is also on that color. So there is a theme which has happened. So this bottom bar is also certain colors, right? So uh, when you go back to the product here, uh, if you go into the account section here, so you will see something called branding. Yep. So this branding option is available for customers who are, uh, uh, this option is enabled for them, right? Based on their pricing package, this branding mm -hmm. is enabled. Uh, otherwise, Floyd branding uh, default comes there. Uh, so here you can upload your logo here. Now, one of the questions people generally ask is like, okay, my logo is of different size. Uh, how do I fit in? Things like that. Uh, because we wanted to use this for, uh, let's say, interactive demo scenarios and uh, uh, video scenarios, embed scenarios. And most of these things are generally uh, in uh, landscape mode. Uh, this is the best resolution which, uh, which would allow any logo to be resized without compromising the I would say the aspect ratio of the logo uh, to a greater extent uh, and maintain the, uh, what do you call it, the, the branding of that organization, right? I mean, I cannot skew the logo in a different way because it is not convenient to show that size, right? So this is mm -hmm. a fixed size. So I would, uh, so this question has come to us, right? Okay, my logo is a square logo. My logo is a vertical logo. All this kind of different questions used to come to us and then uh the, the the answer which we generally give here is yeah there is going to be tons of differences and variations in logo but as long as you are fitting with this aspect ratio and giving it to us then we try to make it uh, as best as possible for different resolutions automatically otherwise it becomes a huge problem uh for every form factors or every mobile form factors or every resolutions we need to have like, then I would ask, give me upload five different logos in different sizes, which generally in a website, people generally do it, right? So so that is why we made it simple in this way. Uh, and we are given like four spots. So either you can keep it on the left, top, bottom, right, uh, depending on how your product is done. You can, uh, let's say for example, uh, our products default logo comes on the left to top. So if you want to put uh, a logo, then you can keep it. But uh, if you see our interactive demos, we have not even put any logos because already Floyd is always on the screen. So we have not added additional logo on, on top of it. Then I can choose one primary color, uh, which will be used for all the hotspots, interactions, wherever the interactions are coming, it will use that primary color. So your company colors, primary color, and the positioning is already taken care of with respect to custom branding. Hmm. Makes sense. And um, so users can organize their flows in different folders, correct? So inside, like you have on the left correct. hand side, the customer and, you know. So this, and this then, entire screen is getting a complete overhaul. This is, this we call it as an inbox. So this completely uh, new version would get released by uh, early next week itself. So all our current users will see a complete change in the screen here. Uh, so there, the entire approach is very different. Uh, so we have very few customers who creates uh, like uh, hundreds of uh, demos and things like that. Uh, and uh, and for them, the requirement is very different. So they wanted a different kind of organization structure. For example, like Google Docs, right? If you go to Google Docs, generally where we maintain a lot of documentation, you have a left side, a simple view, but if on the right hand side, if you see, uh, the Google Docs already gives you the directory as uh, uh, selection. It gives you a list of directory as boxes and it will tell you what are the files inside the directory. You click on a directory, you see the files. You click on a directory, you see the files. So the Google mm. Doc approach gives you much better, uh, I would say, uh, scalability in terms of uh, viewing the content, viewing multiple directories. At the same time, uh, uh, it gives you that ability to actually see the entire content, the complete content. 
So one of the feedback which we got in this uh, view is like if I if I name my flow very long, it gets cut. Hmm. And it is very difficult to read. So some of these things and other uh, aspects which uh, the, the moving between folder is a little complicated in this. Like if we want to move this flow from here to the other folder, it is a little complicated. It is possible, but it requires a little bit of, uh, I would say, nuances to kind of do it. So some of these things are completely addressed in the new inbox, which you're going to come in. But to answer your question, this is where you will see the list of items. Uh, but of course, in the new UI, it will come on the main screen itself. You see the list of items with certain aspects of metadata, when it was created, whether it is published, not published, whether it is active. Some of those informations also will be available. Here, to see certain things, you have to click on the uh, uh, flow to see whether it is published or not. So it is in share mode, so which means it is published. If it is not in share, if it is in edit, then it is not published. So it is little inconvenient to see it in one glance. So some of these things are kind of addressed in uh, those scenarios. Makes sense. Good. I think uh, that's great. Uh, okay. That's very important. So one, we'll go through some questions. One, uh, one, I think uh, some... one last aspect I will show you. Sure, sure, sure. Definitely. Definitely. So this is one flow which we which I recorded a few a few days back. Uh, here yeah. I'm going to just show this copy link here. So this mm -hmm. is the other format which we talked about where the presenter video is also captured along with the yes. product uh, demo. So here you can see my presenter video which is shown on the screen here. And uh, let's say I am actually. So, so one of the capabilities which we have built here is. Uh, for example, if you take loop video, right, what happens is it will it will capture this and this will stay here mm -hmm. and actually uh, hide some of your product aspects. Whereas here, this is completely movable. You can keep it in a different place as a watcher and uh, you can you can still see the product. You can see the feed and something about the product. And this will also work in all the formats. Right? For example, I can create an interactive demo where I am saying certain things and the user is actually clicking on certain things. I can actually show these actions, uh, make it much more immersive view. Uh, of course, I have to have a good background. Uh, this is again one of the requests which is coming to us. Like I want to have a virtual background capability, uh, which which is not, uh, I would say it is in the roadmap, but we have to start that uh, based on number of people asking for it, uh, some of those capabilities. Uh, but most of our users who are actually going to create demos, uh, they are saying that uh, uh, we, when we want to capture a demo, we sit in a nice quiet place without much of a noise. So it is not a big, a big problem for us. And virtual background is likely all some inconveniences there, right? For example, you'll see certain things like this. You can also see in my my videos, all right? It's not that very clean, clear. So they think, okay, my background is good enough. Need white background. So the requirement is also like not that that much coming in to us in that way. Yeah, this is the last right. point. This is the other other two formats uh, which I wanted to showcase uh, in the in the in the in the product of NA. These these all these aspects mm -hmm. makes sense. I think there's one more question about the um, the team management inside the folders, right? So let's say we have one additional member. Mm -hmm. Um, so like, do they have different access or how does that work? Okay. Do the so, folders, can they, you know, yeah. Perfect. So this is a single user. So as of now I have logged in as, uh, let's say the administrator or the owner of this particular, uh, account and I get to access something called my workspace and I see all the folders here and completely I have, I'm owning it. In the, I will give the context in terms of the new, uh, the new UI, which is getting released in another, let's say five, 10 days time period, less than that. So there you have two concepts. One is something called the team view and the uh, uh, team space and my space. So as a owner who is signing up for the team account, he will have uh, access to team space. He will have access to his own my space. So uh, whatever he does in his, in his MySpace will stay as private for that particular person. Got it. Whatever uh, he does it in team space is available for all the members. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is with respect to the owner. Now with respect yes. to the member, as a member I'm joining, let's say Karan is you are the owner of a particular team space and uh, Vidya I'm joining your team. Uh, what I get is I get, I also get my own MySpace. 
So as with you, I have my own my space where I can create flows. Uh, I can see what is going on. I can publish things, everything I can see, but it is not shared with the team or anybody. Mm -hmm. I will also have access to the team space where I can go create folders, create flows. I can, I can do things on that, which will be visible for the entire team. Make sense. I can move flows from my folder to uh, my, my space to the team space. I can copy from here to there. Uh, I can uh, edit my flows wherever it is kept, whether, whether it is in my space or in team space. If I am the owner, I will be able to edit the flows. Uh, if I have five members, uh, everybody can see each other, but only the owner, owner of the flow can edit the flow. Okay. As the Makes owner sense. of the team space, he gets a little bit more privileged access. So he can actually delete the flow of a member. He can, uh, uh, he can, uh, 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 let's say, unpublish a flow of a member. So certain additional capabilities will be available as an owner of the team hmm. space. So he's an administrative slash owner of the team space. He gets a little more privilege. Uh, these are some of the basic variations. We don't want to complicate here with too much roles and responsibility because that becomes a whole bunch of con configuration. So we made it very, very simple. Uh, just uh, very bad, uh, simple and just use it kind of scenario we have built it. Hmm. That will come as part of the team space and uh, okay, uh, makes sense. Okay, um, so quick questions. I think we can answer them. I was just can 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 anyone add additional custom CDM skater for an additional charge if they buy the tier three today? Sorry, can you please repeat custom? Uh, C name. Custom domain, same. Yes, uh, yes. Get uh, for an additional charge uh, if they buy the tier three today. It's from Tom. Yes, yes. So uh, again, this is uh, also work in progress, which would get released by another couple of weeks. If you go to account settings, you will see uh, another option here for domain custom domain. Uh, if that option is enabled, user will get that option to see here, and they can provide the custom domain uh, which they wanted to give, and uh, once they have given that. Uh, it will also give you the instruction to add a C name uh, against in your DNS entry against the new name, and uh, we will provide the server IP or the host name details to the user. And once that is done, uh, DNS takes sometimes to replicate a couple of hours to four hours. It takes uh, uh, on a worst case scenario. Best case scenario, it happens in like 30 minutes or less than that. Uh, mm -hmm. It will automatically get enabled. And uh, instead of, uh, for example, in, if you see all these links here, right, instead of flight.com, you can actually use your link there. Makes sense. The URL will slightly change. For example, it will, it would, it would, uh, instead of this URL, it would, I, I'm just putting something else here. Let's say help.abc.com. Let's say it would change something like this. And uh, it would work in that way. That is the CNAME capability which will, uh, which would come in. Uh, as of now, this is also available. So, uh, people who are, who would want right now, uh, we have a process in place. Uh, it is not available in the UI, which can be self-served today. Uh, but we have a process so they can actually get in touch with our support team. Uh, and uh, we get into a call uh, with them, understand uh, uh, like what kind of domain they would want. And uh, we do the necessary setup in our end and uh, enable it. So we okay. do that as a process as of today. So they can have multiple. So they can have multiple C names eventually. Uh, so we are offering one C name per flow space, uh, one account. Uh, okay. uh, multiple C names. Uh, we have not got. I mean, like, uh, uh, we are, we are, uh, we are uh, yet to kind of uh, work on that plan on multiple C names as to how that could be done. Uh, not from a technical aspect, but from a business aspect, uh, capabilities and how things like that. Uh, the scenarios, there are certain scenarios where multiple C names would make sense and uh, in certain scenarios it doesn't make sense. So that is work in progress, I would say, as a thought exercise and uh, discussion. Yeah, correct, working. correct. Yeah, that's what that's what they want to know. That, you know eventually, you know, whenever it happens, yeah, yeah. Yes. it will be yeah. correct. Makes yeah. sense. All right. Cool. I think uh, we have a few more questions, but before that, uh, we will jump on to, uh, uh, I think, an FAQ which you have been, if you're in the reading all the comments everywhere, people asking about your comparison with SmartCube when you launched, right? So I think that question is a prevalent across every community, every com, every member. So I think we can give a quick, you know, five minute uh, kind of an overview as to how Fluoric is different from SmartCube. 
and uh, why they should prefer you know floic and how both of them compare with each other you know stuff like that so if you can give a 5 minute quick rundown okay uh pratika you want me to do it or are you going to go ahead for this yeah i mean uh, i can go ahead you can add uh, anything yeah. works so one big difference uh, karan and uh, everybody uh, here from rocket hub community we are creating floic as an in, like a product showcase platform for end to end customer journey not just for interactive demos and not just for showing uh, demos on your website or for sales purpose so if you look at you know if, how your customers journey starts when they come on your website they need awareness they need to know what the product does basic stuff when they sign up they need to know how onboarding works so you know you can include uh, videos and emails uh send very very personalized onboarding videos instead of uh you know just text emails and then once they become your customers they also need on an ongoing basis a uh, reference material and reference guide on how to use the product so one big difference really is we are a holistic product showcase platform for all steps of your customer journey and not just one uh the second one is uh, i think all the other differences really emanate from this vision that we have where we are uh going to be the all you know uh one stop shop for <clears throat> all of these requirements so if i look at uh, you know some of the capabilities in this slide like converting from one uh, form factor into the other with just one click and importing everything that you've done there uh, in the second one so you don't have to repeat any of your efforts like that came up from this that a lot of times people have videos but they don't have reference material they have reference materials but they don't have an interactive uh, demo uh secondly we are going very very heavy and we are going to leave, lean heavily on uh, generative ai so you are seeing uh, some aspects right now already with ai voiceovers we were the first ones in the market to actually have ai voiceovers as part of interactive demos as well before that everybody only had like a click 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 kind of experience we were the first ones to have video plus your own voiceover or interactive voiceover in between interactive demos i think we are still the first ones to have your own voiceover as well uh, so you know i can actually make an interactive demo where i am also speaking you hear me, my voice and then you can click through the demo which uh, is not available across any other platform uh, which again emanates from the fact that we are working backwards from making sure you are there and your product is there as a superhero for all steps of your customer's journey uh the third thing i would say is uh you will start seeing this uh, very quickly that uh, some of the analytics and uh, you know uh, data engagement that we are going to lean on uh, is going to be very very richer uh, as compared to any other platform because we are working with our users to also integrate very deeply with the crms that they work with so you know you can fetch data back on if this is a these are like x number of leads coming on your website you know which is a hot lead and you could tag that person as or you could tag that event as a hot lead so imagine if you have integrated with crm and you say if somebody reaches step 7 out of 10 then that person is a hot lead and then trigger this action automatically those are the kind of things that we want to work on so we don't want to just be like a demo tool right so are we think of ourselves as a customer engagement and a customer showcasing platform rather than a demo tool uh yeah i don't want to get into like feature feature comparison but i just wanted to make sure we share you know how we think what we are building itself is uh where we are coming from and why it is very different from a demo tool mm -hmm. makes sense great i think yeah so everyone who has a question about smart queue uh so i guess even published uh, a comparison on their own website so you can go ahead and check the, all, all the technicalities and nitty gritties of it you can go ahead and have a look there but on the 30000 feet point of view this is why you need floic and they're building for everyone and every use case every possible use case you can imagine that's where you can use it all right so i think i summarized it very well um with the if you have to add, add anything you can sure to it yeah i think uh, pretty much uh, the crux of the point uh, i think utika brought it out very clearly so uh, it's a holistic uh, view it is not uh, a simple demo or a showcasing platform 
uh, you just create a video and put it on a website. It is not there. The, 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 the journey doesn't stop there. We think that is the beginning of the journey rather than the end of the journey. So that is just the one step towards your journey of, let's say, customer success or customer uh, getting new customers into your product, right? So mm. this entire thing is where uh, we would be uh, addressing. Good, great. Um, good, I think we can now talk about uh, what's next for Fuik, right? So an overview of five points uh, in your roadmap, let's see what's coming next for users or what they can expect. And then later on, we can then take up the final questions and announce the wrap up. So yeah, we can go through the your roadmap kind of overview of what's happening behind the scenes. We we cannot see right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I'll start and Vidya, like please jump in. Yeah. So one of the things that I mentioned already, I think we want to lean in very heavily on uh, analytics and data for all the engagement that happens uh, across the product showcases that users create. To that extent, we are working extensively on a deeper HubSpot integration to begin with, followed by Pipedrive, uh, followed by whichever is the CRM that uh, our users most request. Uh, and we are not doing just a very superficial integration. This will be a lot more deeper integration where uh, you, know, you can enrich data both ways. And you can also do personalized demos uh, automatically at scale. So imagine you're using, you're doing a cold outreach to thousand people uh, for each of those guys in, in their emails, you send an interactive demo where for each interactive demo, the call to action is personalized to say like, Hey, Karan or Hey, Tom or Hey, Viet, uh, and even their company name. So whatever fields are available in CRM can get, mm -hmm. you know, pulled into every single interactive demo so that for you, the effort is creating one demo, but imagine you are wowing like thousand plus leads very quickly. So that is like the first one that we are really excited about to bring uh, out very, very soon. Uh, the second one, as I mentioned, you know, we are leaning more on generative AI. And uh, we also got some questions on this group about translations and other voiceovers and so on. So we are definitely going to make sure we keep enriching that part uh, further. Uh, the third big one is everything on team, because what we are learning is, uh, you know, given the capabilities here, we thought we will be relevant mostly for sales and marketing, but we are seeing, you know, product teams want to use us for even internal showcasing and internal mm -hmm. feature announcements, or they want to plug us in their change logs. Uh, customer success wants to, you know, use us to update their customers or create like ad hoc material for references and so on. And what we are seeing is, once they create one, like teams, different teams, if they have like a product CMS of sorts, then everybody in the company can use, you know, the same content management system, which currently does not exist for product features and product updates. So bringing in the whole team and, you know, how that looks like and what kind of roles permissions uh, should be there so that it's most relevant for this use case uh, is like the third big thing that we are going to be uh, working on. Uh, the fourth one is more, I would say, club it in, in the beautification and aesthetics and animated uh, bucket where, you know, what we have learned is uh, it's very, very, when it's effortless, it feels like magic, but uh, it doesn't happen easily. And so, you know, how can you create showcases where uh, for you, it was just clicking through the workflow, but the outcome was like, wow, you know, so there is like animations, which is thoughtful and intuitive. Uh, there are just things which have ha which happen automatically, which otherwise would have taken an editor or a video uh, animator to spend hours on uh, so that anybody can create these uh, beautiful looking showcases automatically. So we are going to invest uh, more time in like aesthetics and, you know, beautification of the output itself so that the output looks mm -hmm. extremely, extremely appealing and dazzling uh, to the visitors. Uh, yeah. Did they want to add anything? Yeah. Uh, other than these things, right, uh, on the, uh, we are also trying to give capabilities for uh, adding background music uh, uh, in terms of uh, uh, when, when on a recording, which was done. And uh, uh, other thing is like uh, if you have noticed in the demo, we saw multiple languages which are available, right? Uh, 
So we wanted to again provide multi-language support for the watcher uh, at all times. So now it's a choice of the creator where I have to choose French and then say I'll release it in French. Then I have to choose German and release it in German. But I cannot release on both the languages together. So that is another capabilities which we are thinking on in terms of uh, uh, giving multi-language support and automatically switching between uh, languages based on, let's say, location or maybe based on users' preferences, things like that. Uh, uh, then uh, are the overall aspect of it, right, in terms of uh, the capability itself, right? I mean, of course, these are some of the tech capabilities which we are building in terms of like optimizations and uh, distributions and things like that, uh, that we are planning. And uh, another aspect which uh, which is a very large aspect uh, which we may be uh, working on uh, for the top tier people would be on the complete SEO aspect of it. So how yep. these things would work in terms of that and what would happen for those people, right? Uh, those those cases. Uh, yeah. Great. Yeah, I think yeah, that summarizes that uh, when you brought up brought up customer success, right? So I had I have sent this product to a friend and he said uh, our team was dying to get something like this because they were they were not able to make this make the customers understand so there were a lot of to and flow between the emails and he said okay if I just had one I think I, we could cut off those support tickets and uh, irrelevant email to and flow threads which are being created so I think that's I think a very good use case um, for CS teams to get this. Also, Karen, like uh, we didn't go through this, but all the folders that you see here are publishable in its entirety. So you can actually publish a folder and grab a URL for a folder. Uh, and how teams use that is uh, if I'm in customer success, right? I want to share three different uh, workflows or three different capabilities with you. Then all three of them can just be listed together and I send you this folder. And I can also create these for each customer so they feel special. But for me, it's just... Uh, so imagine this starts becoming like a custom library for every customer, uh, but your effort is next to zero. Makes sense. Um, but just showing that well, I think I was speaking. Yeah, I saw. Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I yes, also I think to give a shout out to Tom for being like really, really engaged and asking all the amazing questions and also for bubbling up this use case for you know, training seniors uh, who are tech phobic and tech illiterate. Like this is so yes, close. To I was getting to that. I said, yeah, okay, this is when I read that, I said, it's, this is a good thing. Yeah, this is so close to our heart. In fact, I'm working, uh, we are uh, in touch with Get Set Up, which is a startup between US and India, uh, works exclusively with seniors to train them in tech products. And uh, this is like a use case which is very close to our heart. So thanks, Tom, for, for highlighting that. Good, good. I think that's amazing. We can even highlight that, you know, you, you are going outside, you know, SaaS and product space. <laughs> yeah. So Let you can add additional industry. <laughs> All right. Um, so, yeah, I think uh, there's just one last question before. Uh, and I think anyone else, if you missed out on, but I think we have covered everyone's questions. So, which is the uploading, you know, while you are creating all of this, right? So. I think that might be in a roadmap, but uploading images and videos um, to add, I think um, you, if you can address how it's going to work out, um, you know, when you are creating any flow, if you want to upload an image and add it over there while you're editing it. Yeah, no, that's very much on our roadmap. In fact, uh, while we were doing, uh, we actually released the ad step uh, within guide for everyone. So within ad step, you can actually also upload an image. So that part is taken care of for guides. And very soon we will replicate this also for interactive demos where, you know, let's say you missed a step or you are actually going to add a step uh, from a desktop app, which you can't record mm -hmm. using Floyd, then you can just upload those steps in the middle. Uh, and also you can add uh, an intro image or an outro image, uh, which will come uh, quickly. Uh, as far as uploading entire videos is concerned, we are still learning what that use case would be for users. And, you know, because we don't want to be like a, a drive uh, or for a storage uh, mm. use case, right? So what do they want yeah. to do with upload, video uploads? Uh, we're still in the process of learning that a little more deeply. And if it will make sense for them, we are definitely going to pick that up as well. Great. I think Tom had a question about, can you show an example of your training videos uh, where the first bit of it, I think you have the gallery. So he's talking about gallery, I think. 
yeah, we have everything on our gallery. You can go to Academy, Floyd Academy. That's also. The yeah. Both are there. This will tell you different aspects of it. Uh, let's say video related items, guide related items, gimbal related items. This gives you an idea of like what is getting started. For example, some of the points which we didn't showcase during this call is like, how do you crop the screen? How do you trim the video? Certain points, uh, parts are already there. Uh, uh, for example, let's say I'm clicking on this. Uh, this will showcase you how do you trim a uh, video, right? Uh, so you click on trim. I mean, this is an interactive demo of like how uh, how things can be done in Floyd using Floyd itself. So this is like a training video, uh, sorry, training interactive demo example. So uh, this is one, this doesn't have a voiceover, but yeah, this can be done with voiceover too. And uh, if you go back here, uh, so this is on this. Uh, so yeah, you'll see a good amount of material here uh, are giving different uh, capabilities. And uh, this is also galleries there. So this is like, on different products, certain capabilities. We have created like, a, these are like demos, right? How this certain things can be showcased in different products, right? To, to give you a spectrum of how a feature can be showcased, how a, how a workflow can be showcased, things like that. Correct. And I think I like this, like you're showcasing different apps, you know, this is very good. The gallery, uh, people who want to see it, you know, from, how do you open Gmail and stuff like that? Make it customized. This is blurred. This is there. These are different aspects. This is this is a kind of an embed too. If you see here, this is an embedded view of a of a guide inside this. But I mean, you can always click here and see the full view also. Oh, that was a preview. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is completely customizable. That is what it is like. You can you can Makes uh, sense. you can add this. Cool. And this is the selection, so I can I can click here, go to different. I want to ask Fahad's uh, question while we are here, which is, can we also create a showcase uh, gallery for flows created by us? Uh, so Fahad, right now we use uh, Webflow for our website and we've embedded and used uh, these directly. So if you have any platform, uh, you can create what we have created easily there. Uh, independently, uh, we are still uh, working on, so the folder published that you saw, we will be introducing some templates where you can publish them entirely as a gallery, uh, you know, pre-packaged with uh, designs and everything. Uh, but for now, uh, it works. We, we are compatible with any platform that you have, but independently, uh, you can't create a very beautiful gallery today. But you can, I think, if you're, if you're a web developer, you can. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Go That's what I'm saying. Like, just organize this in yes. your own. You know. Yes. Okay, makes sense. This is this is completely done in Webflow. So this is all these things are done there, and uh, this this entire thing is actually published in let's say in Floyd. And on click of this, it is nothing but it is showing you the CMS content uh, in uh, in in Webflow, and each one is actually a link which uh, which is published by us. Okay, makes Next sense. Question on data storage limits. Will we have any data storage limits with there? <laughs> uh, the limits are in two uh, two aspects. One is uh, the limit is uh, on the, the amount of time which is uh, used in terms of capture. So we limit it maximum for uh, 10 minutes for a single flow. Uh, the reason is uh, the 10 minutes is uh, because of uh, uh, this is not uh, a platform where you record a one hour long, uh, let's say a learning or a tutorial session. This is for showcasing capabilities, features. So uh, the context of the product plays a role in terms of the max time limit, which you have come up with. Uh, that is one uh, limitation. And other than that, based on the, the plan in which you subscribe, uh, we'll give you the number of flows as a limitation, whether it is like say 10 flows or 20 flows or unlimited based on that. Uh, different uh, packages uh, you signed up for. That is where the limitation comes in. Makes sense. 
Yep, I think uh, that's amazing. Good. So you, I think Fahad has a follow-up question limit for plan three. Sorry, uh, was that a question? Yeah, I think Fahad has a follow-up question for the storage. Is there a limit for plan three for this? Ah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that will be announced, okay. Yes. Makes sense. All right, so one of one last question before we wrap up, and um, that's regarding the recording durations. I think this question someone had that can we can we record for long durations on Floyd? Let's say if I have to record a big demo on in one shot. Is there a so, limit of time, you know, which they can do or yeah, as I was saying, uh the best optimum time uh based on the user analysis and the research analysis which we mm -hmm. got from a demo perspective, the attention span of the user in terms of like on a on a on a particular capability or on the let's say the hero use case of your product uh we got a uh, user feedback of something like seven and a half to eight minutes after that uh something interrupts or the mind waves off from that point so we have kept as a max as 10 minutes for now just to give that one minute as a buffer time uh for that Makes sense. so that would be the max cap in terms of the recording uh length it's not a technical limitations. It is purely based on the business uh, need. Uh, what makes sense from a demo creation platform on that context you have kept it. Makes sense. Good. All right. I think that was a great, great interaction with the audience. And you answered the questions very, very, uh, you know, in depth, in depth and in detail. So thank you for that. And uh, so, folks, before we wrap up, any last statements to the community? After that, I can like, jump in and mention about the deal and when is the discount ending. Yeah, we just want to take a moment and really appreciate the community. Uh, it's just been a week, but uh, trust us, we are loving, loving the kind of engagement, feedback, uh, attention, uh, suggestions, uh, you know, creative inputs that we are receiving from the Rocket Up community. And... Uh, uh, you know, we are like, as I mentioned in the beginning, we are super small, but very, 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 very dedicated, passionate team. So all of us have been on our toes and loving it uh, every single moment of it. Uh, so yeah, I would love for everybody to keep the love coming, keep the questions coming. And uh, we are here to make sure your product shines. Uh, and anything that stands between that, uh, we would love to work together. Yeah. Amazing uh, team and uh, yeah, amazing community. Lots of inputs and lots, lots of customers coming in for us. Like um, they are able to utilize the product in uh, in in so many different ways. Uh, it's amazing. <laughs> it's 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 so cool. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's what they do, right? I mean, when they start using it, you would keep receiving new yeah. tickets. You would keep people having in in your support chat, mentioning about, hey, I'm from Rocket. Uh, I bought this and. Uh, I have the suggestion for you. You know, that's what, that's how it's helpful for <clears throat> the product team at Floyd and the engineers to kind of take the note and, you know, uh, start uh, working on it. So that's amazing. And everyone right now, the DJs guy on Rocket Up, it's just been one week and we have received a good number of uh, people jumping in um, and getting, jumping on the bandwagon and getting the product. So before, um the fourth weekends you should go ahead and grab this uh on rocket up right now the 30 bar discount ends tonight so after that you won't be getting it um so make sure go ahead uh it's rocketup.com slash deal slash floic and it's one of the first deals on the page anyway so you can whenever you launch whenever you launch rocketup.com you would see that so go ahead grab it before it ends and um the team is here the founders is here founders are here and we have uh people outside and people someone asked if there's a quick community they can join so are you guys on slack or something are you interacting with customers if you all posted amazing yeah. so i think yeah you will have it i think mostly on slack so if you or i think or on facebook or i think no one is on facebook right now uh except from daman <laughs> so then we will be having that community on slack so you can join there and um and start the conversations with the team Cool. Thank you so much, Vidya and Vartika, for your time. I think we took up a lot of time of yours. Um, so we have nothing that <laughs> really thank yeah. you.
All right. Hope you enjoyed, and um, thank you so much, everyone, the attendees, the audience, and wherever you are from. Um, thank you again. Good night. Good morning. Good evening. And thank you, Vidya. Thank you, Vartika. Thank you. And we thank should you. see you soon. Thank, bye, thank bye, you, everyone. Yeah. Bye.